Crime is a result of a strain between legitimate goals and lack of opportunities to achieve those goals. Train theory argues that crime occurs when there aren't enough legitimate opportunities for people to achieve the normal success goals of a society. In such a situation there is a strain between the goals and the means to achieve those goals, and some people turn to crime in order to achieve success. Strain theory was first developed by Robert Merton in the 1940s to explain the rising crime rates in the USA. Strain theory has become popular with contemporary sociologists. Robert Merton Strain theory, the basics. Merton argued that the cultural system of the USA was built on the American dream. This was a set of meritocratic principles which assured the American public that equality of opportunity was available to all, regardless of class, gender or ethnicity. The American dream encouraged individuals to pursue a goal of success which was largely measured in terms of the acquisition of wealth and material possessions. People were expected to pursue this goal through legitimate means such as education and work. The dominant cultural message was if you are ambitious, talented and work hard, then income and wealth should be your rewards. However Merton pointed out that these goals were not attainable by all. The structural organization of the USA meant that the means to get on were not fairly distributed. It was difficult, if not impossible for some to compete and achieve financial success. Merton developed the concept of anime to describe this imbalance between cultural goals and institutionalized means. He argued that such an imbalanced society produces anime, there is a strain or tension between the goals and means which produce unsatisfied aspirations. Crime. A consequence of anime. Anime was a socially fostered state of discontent and deregulation that generated crime and deviance. American society promised so much to everyone but denied many people equal access to achievement. People might have been motivated to succeed, but they confronted class, race and other social barriers which contradicted the myth of openness. For example, it was not easy for a poor, inner-city teenager to gain qualifications or get a job. In American society at the time failure was interpreted as a sign of personal rather than structural weakness. Failure tended to lead to individual guilt rather than collective or political anger. The pressure to succeed could be so powerful that impelled disadvantaged people to bypass legitimate careers and adopt illegitimate careers. As Merton puts it. 5. Adaptations to Strain Merton argued that when individuals are faced with a gap between their goals and their current status, strain occurs. When faced with strain, people have five ways to adapt. 1. Conformity Pursing cultural goals through socially approved means. 2. Innovation. Using socially unapproved or unconventional means to obtain culturally approved goals. 2. Example. Dealing drugs or stealing to achieve financial security. 3. Ritualism. Using the same socially approved means to achieve less elusive goals, more modest and humble. 4. Retreatism. To reject both the cultural goals and the means to obtain it, then find a way to escape it. 5. Rebellion. To reject the cultural goals and means, then work to replace them. Strain Theory, Social Class and Crime. Merton's strain theory can be applied to explain why there is higher rate of crime among the working classes. Advertisements. Report this AD. Merton developed his theory from a well-established observation from official statistics that a higher proportion of acquisitive crime is committed by those from unskilled manual backgrounds, or, lower social classes. Merton noted that American society promoted material success as a legitimate goal, and encouraged self-discipline and hard work as the legitimate means of pursuing that goal, with the idea that any individual, irrespective of their background could, with sufficient effort, achieve material success. However, Merton argued that for those from lower social classes, this dream had become an ideology, masking the fact that the legitimate opportunities are not available to all, and worse, those who failed to achieve success via legitimate means were condemned for their apparent lack of effort. This situation puts great pressure on people to achieve material success by illegitimate means, acquisitive crime, to avoid being branded a failure. In short, Merton argued that America was a highly unequal and divided society which promoted goals that only some of its population could realistically hope to achieve. Many young, working-class men especially had internalized the desire to achieve material success, 
They wanted cars and nice clothes for example. But the only way they could meet these goals was through crime. Thus, it is not so much the individual's flaws that lead them to crime, but rather, anime, in society. The combination of the pressure to be materially successful and the lack of legitimate opportunities to achieve that success. Criticisms of strain theory. Not all working class individuals turn to crime, and so we need something else to explain why some of them do and some of them do not. Subcultural theorists argued that the role of working class subcultures plugs this gap in the explanation. Deviant subcultures provide rewards for individuals who commit crime. Merton's reliance on official statistics means he overestimates the extent of working class crime and underestimates the extent of middle class or white collar crime. Strain theory only really explains economic crime, it doesn't really explain violent crime. Marxists argue Merton is not critical enough of capitalism. They point out that lack of equality of opportunity is at the heart of the capitalist system. Elites make the system work for them, which disadvantages the lower classes.